And uh, thanks for everyone for joining. Um, my name is Shamim, co-founder of Beeswax, head of product, and uh, excited to talk about data augmenters. So it's it's you know one of the more powerful features that we have on the Beeswax platform, and we get a lot of questions about it. It's not always obvious when a customer should um, use a data augmenter versus use a more off-the-shelf feature that we have. So the goal of this conversation is to um, is to go through that and hopefully paint a picture where it's clear, you know, when uh, when you would use a, 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 a custom data augmenter um, and what's required for it. Um, so in terms of agenda, I'll I'll talk through what I'm I'm denoting here is what, uh, standard augmentation. So um, the stuff that we do, which does not require custom data augmentation. To, to create a sort of clear distinction between the two. Then we'll get into what a custom data augmenter is and when you would use it. And then lastly, we'll talk about the technical requirements for implementing one. Um, so starting with um, what I'm calling standard augmentation. So first, let's just define what augmentation means. So we think of it as you're adding data somehow to an auction um, for use downstream downstream meaning usually um, I you may want to target on it i.e decision based off of that additional data that's added to the auction or optimize um, such as you know changing your your price based off of that additional data um, in other sort of data science uh, or data platforms it can be called data enrichment it's the same same thing adding data we just call it augmentation. Um, and so um, that's a, just a quick definition of what we're talking about here. Um, so first, what, you know, what are some things that Beeswax offers out of the box sort of standard? So, um, you know, like, like most uh, platforms we have, um, user segments is a first party thing in, in Beeswax where um, you can leverage um, to express your, um, your segments. So the way that it works is, you know, the lookup key, the way to think about it is there's a lookup key to match a segment. And that is a, um, a user ID. So it's very high cardinality. So it could be a typical user ID, like a mobile ID or a cookie or CTV ID. Um, but we've recently added a bunch of additional IDs, like it could be your first party ID. It could be a custom ID from a publisher um, it could be an IP address. There's lots of ways of expressing a user ID. Um, and, you know, those, these sorts of user segments are populated in batch or in real time via um, a segment tag. So that's standard, you know, that you could use, you could use that. Another type of standard augmentation that we offer is something we call custom lists. So this is um, the lookup key to this sort of thing is lower cardinality. Um, than a user ID. So, you know, here's a full list of the things we offer. There's a lot of stuff, app ID, publisher ID, um, zip code, deal ID. Um, anytime there's been sort of a need for a, a more standard type of um, what we call a list, which is not a user ID, we create a new a custom list type. Um, these are populated in batch uh, typically. And the way to think about, so, uh, you know, what makes these things standard um, is, is, you know, A, beeswax is defining the lookup key, right? It's some form of user ID or, or one of these things for custom lists. So we define it. The second attribute of it, I would say, is that the data resides in beeswax. So that data has to be uploaded. It, it, it remains at rest in the beeswax system. And third um, is that beeswax systems are performing the lookup. Right, we're actually ha we're managing the system that does the lookup from the key to the thing. Um, so that's how to think about hey, if it's standard augmentation, these three things are true. Um, so now let's talk about custom data augmentation. So what is it? First of all, so it's a service that you, the customer, builds and owns, where you could do you have the optionality to do. Um, sort of the inverse of the three things I just mentioned. So the first thing you could do is is customize the lookup key. So you as the customer define the lookup key 
um, however you want. It could be based off of a combination of, of things, but you construct it. We'll talk more about that. The second thing is um, privacy. So um, with a custom data augmenter, the data resides entirely in your walls, right? So you are not uploading data to Beeswax. It's a real-time service um, and the data completely resides in your walls, which is really important. Um, the third is control. So your system is performing the lookup. You're no longer reliant on a beeswax system to perform the lookup. Um, so these are sort of, at, when we think about custom data augmentation, it's usually um, one of at least, or a combination of these three things that you know, cause a customer to, to use a custom data augmenter instead of a standard augmenter. So let's, let's go through that in a little bit more depth and give some examples. So the first, you know, again, use case is you want to have defined the lookup key. So um, it can really be anything. So I'm just going to give a couple examples. One, one example is some combination key, like, you know, as a customer, and this is just an example, right? An exchange app bundle zip combination. You create a unique key off of that. And you want to map that to some value um, that means something for you, which you could then use for um, optimization downstream. Um, so, you know, value could be what it's worth to you. It could be viewability, whatever. And it's important to note that um, in value can as a as a flow or you know as a fraction. Um, so that's one, one option. Um, I'm getting my internet connected. You guys can still he hear me. Um, another example, and this is something that several customers have done is, um, latitude, longitude to a physical place. So that is, um, that again, that key is latitude, longitude, and you're mapping it to a physical place, like an address, like Starbucks on 23rd street or something, you have that database, you want to do that lookup. Um, that is a, another example um, for something custom that you could do with the data augmenter, the custom data augmenter that you could not with the standard augmenter. So that's the first attribute, doing something custom, custom, custom key. Um, the second is uh, privacy, and this is pretty straightforward. The data resides in your walls. Um, so you could, you know, you could use one of the custom use cases that I mentioned above, but you could still do standard user ID to segment lookups with a data augmenter. Um, and the reason you would do that is for privacy reasons. You may either have um, some restriction um, at your company that says you cannot share certain, certain user ID, user data with any third party or, um, you know, just, for, just to be sort of conservative and you want to make sure there's, absolutely 0% chance of any data leakage, et cetera, you want the data to reside in your walls, that's another reason to use a data augmenter for privacy reasons. Um, and the third reason folks usually choose um, is because you can perform the lookups yourself, um, there's no dependency on beeswax tech for that lookup. So you know what that typically means is, typically it's because of the nature, the whatever data you're looking up um, is changing in real time or near real time. Uh, and you want no dependency on a beeswax system for making that data available. So, um, so therefore you want full control and um, you want to do the lookups yourself. So as you think about, you know, and the use cases totally depend on the customer. It's why it's called a custom data augmenter. Um, but it's usually one of these th three things or, a combination of these three things um, that causes a customer to uh, have a custom data augmenter. Um, so how does it work? And then we'll take some questions. So first, first thing is important is when does custom data augmentation occur in sort of the life of a bid? Um, and we have a more detailed, we have a 15 minute uh, session on the life of a bid. I would encourage you to, to watch, but um, at the, at the most basic level, the thing that you should be aware of is that the data augmenter, which is step two, 
happens after we we filter auctions um, um, to your to your bidder. So you know, as you know, the first step in in having your own bidder instance in beeswax is is you define the auctions you want to receive. And so we that first box is our filtering. We'll filter the data, and then um, things go through a data augmenter. Um, so they happen second uh, before they get forwarded to your stinger, which is where targeting um, and frequency cap and other things happen. And also before it could go to a bidding agent or any other form of custom optimization. So the reason why that's important is two is one, sorry. Um, it happens after filtering. So you cannot filter on something that is added through your data augmenter. So that's important. Um, and second, it's happening before you of course bid on it and optimize. Um, uh, so that's when it happens. Now let's talk about sort of what happens and what is required. Um, so this is just a you know similar diagram with a bit more details. So the way that um, a data augmenter works is that the API between um, you, the customer, and us beeswax is we'll give you the request with the full open RTB request. So all the fields, including user ID and app and domain and the hundreds of open RTB fields we provide to you. Um, and you can then use any of those fields or a combination of those fields to do the lookup to your data store. It's worth noting that we can minify the request. So if you want a lower payload and, and save on data transfer, et cetera, um, we can give you a subset of the objects in the open RTV request um, just to reduce the payload, which is a, a pretty nifty feature that we have. Fonts we expect back from you is simple. It's um, segment IDs and values associated with those segment IDs is all. Um, so it's, you know, typical key value response. Um, and again, it's important to note that the value um, can be a float. So, and you could use that, that floating point number downstream again for optimization. The second thing is sort of the technical requirements. So the way this thing works, it's, um, you know, you're giving us a endpoint um, and it's in the same region as one of where your bitter instance is deployed. Here are the, re the regions where we deploy and um, you would know which region uh, your instance was deployed in. So you have to give us an endpoint in one of those regions. And then the, um, it's an HTTP call and the data format is protobuf and you have 10 milliseconds to respond with the segment uh, ID and values. Um, if you take longer than 10 milliseconds, we'll drop that auction and we'll not forward it to your bidder instance. So that's it, simple API uh, and pretty, pretty straightforward technical requirements. Um, and before I take questions, you know, there's, there's a couple of, of, of points of documentation which are really helpful. The first is uh, an overview of the data augmenter, which is on docs.beeswax. The second is we have a augmenter request generator tool where if you wanted to test an augmenter locally before you deploy in production, um, it's a tool that will stream uh, OpenRTB requests to an endpoint. Um, so you could, you could test for data validation, correctness, that sort of thing. So with that, I will take um, some questions. You could also email me um, directly if you're unable to ask it. Great, well, thank you, Shamim. And uh, we will open it up for questions. Uh, please submit questions with the Q&A feature at the bottom of the Zoom screen. And if you wanna raise your hand, we'll call on you and you can ask your question live. But start with the first one. Uh, do you have a favorite example slash use case as to how a particular company or brand has used data augmentation? Something that perhaps is a really unique or clever way to use augmentation that you don't typically see elsewhere. Yeah, so there is one I could think of. We had a customer who, whose um, sort of secret sauce was determining when a when they believed a user was commuting um, versus mm -hmm. when they were um, not commuting, because when you're commuting, you're very unlikely to interact with ads, and it was viewed as waste, right? And so they had a clever augmenter, which was, you know, using latitude, longitude for the same user, and if it was moving, you know, quickly over time, 
they would mark a bid request as, hey, this this user is in is commuting and therefore do not serve ads to them. You know, pretty interesting, really interesting. Uh, real time, real use case um, that is, I think, pretty unique. Yeah, and although this stuff is really technical, it really is just a great example of the getting yourself in, in the, the life of your customer and putting yourselves in literally their shoes in this point while, you know, while they're on, you know, on a train or on, on, their, on their way to work uh, to know not to bid there. Uh, second question, uh, can I use a data augmenter with my own device graph? You can, yes, that is a good use case. So uh, we didn't talk about, like we have our, uh, you know, Beeswax has a device graph that we license. Um, and if you, the customer had your own, uh, that you built or wanted to use another third party cross device graph that beeswax does not support that would be an excellent use case um, for an augmenter so you would based off of the user id you would look up other associated ids and then do the segment lookups to those associated ids you could do that all on your site Great. Moving on to another question. Are augmenters being used to look up contextual info on a request? Do you think this is a promising approach? Um, yeah, it certainly can. It, so what that means, what you would need to do is have um, a data store that had, you know, URL or page or app to contextual information. Um, so the, the way to think about it is that if you think about what these third party providers like Moat and IS, Grapeshot and folks who have contextual segments, that is what they're doing. They have a database of URLs or apps to, con to con contextual keywords and they're doing that lookup. And so if you had that data or if you could license that data, that would be another use case. Okay. Another question, what kind of resourcing is necessary to build an augmenter? Good question. So, I mean, we see, you know, it's, it's an engineering um, task. So you, you have to be able to parse a request, do a lookup to your data store, get back to us within 10 milliseconds. Um, it doesn't have to be at, you know, it depends on what scale you're running um, you're bitter at, but think of it as thousands. You need to be able to handle thousands of queries per second for a simple lookup. So that's, that's going to be, um, one engineer, you know, um, sort of part-time working on that. Uh, but it is an engineer cause there's production stuff going on. Okay. And, uh, our la the last question I have in the queue, as the death of the cookie is approaching rapidly, we're working to build out our contextual targeting capabilities. Many DSPs we've spoken to truncate the URL in some way, which limits the contextual targeting significantly. Do you pass the full URL to the augmenter or is it limited? If it's limited, to what extent? We pass, it, as long as we get the full URL from the exchange, which we do in many cases, we send that full, full URL uh, downstream to the bidding agent as well as to, um, uh, a, sorry, to data augmenter, as well as to a bidding agent. So you, we do not truncate. Um, you'll get the full URL, assuming we get the full URL from the exchange. Great. And actually, that does remind me of something that Keymantics was talking about on a previous session that, that we did. It's available on our YouTube channel, uh, where they talked about uh, some interesting things they did with data augmenters. Uh, so just go to the Beeswax YouTube channel and look for a video uh, about how Keymantics uh, drove performance. I think it was up to 600 per percent lift over uh, previous uh, um, performance that they had. So that about does it uh, for this session. I do want to tease the next session, which is going to be a platform walkthrough by Senior Customer Success Manager uh, Amelia Merritt. And that's going to be on June 4th, same time. So bring your lunch and bring your questions. I'll send the sign up link to everyone here. Uh, and thank you, everyone. And thank you, Shamim, for walking us through this. Uh, we hope everyone is doing really good social distancing and uh, getting through this rather difficult time. And we'll keep coming at you with some interesting content uh, that you can use. So thank you so, so much. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for your time.